thank you wider and thank you Carlos for organizing this session. The paper that I'm presenting is uh, joint work with Viviana Lancilota and Joaquin Torres. And it's also an empirical paper. And what we aim here is to provide empirical evidence about the combined evolution of income inequality and the productive structure of the economies at the world level. And we approximate the um, two dimensions of the productive structure, the level of informality and the level of economic complexity. Well, in, the, in the paper, we explore heterogeneities in, in terms of income level and regions and also different um, measures of income inequality. I'm just presenting some basic results because this is work in progress. So this is a main question in development economics. How are the levels and changes of income inequality linked to the productive structure of different economies? Uh, we know that they, they are linked mainly through the different intensity in the use of productive factors in the, in the sectors of the economy. And this intensity is reflected by the use of a skill or unskilled uh, labor force, but also by the use of informal or formal labor or by the intensity in the use of technologies. So um, the literature analyzing income inequality has mainly focused on micro determinants at the individual level and mainly exploring the links between, uh, with um, the role of, uh, of the relative wages in between skill and unskilled workers or skill bias, technological trade, trade liberalization and to a lesser extent the role of institutional factors like wage bargaining or, or minimum wages. So here we try to, to make this association with the, with the production structure um, and we have like two attempts to do this, as I said, with informality and with uh, the economic complexity of the, of, the, of the production. In terms of informality, even if these are two, two main feeders of developing econo um, economies, the levels of inequality and informality, there are uh, not many studies that try to explore the, the link. There are some, um, some studies for different countries, but not like generalizations. We have studies for, um, for transition economies, the studies from Rosser that find like a positive correlation between informality and the Gini coefficient. Uh, in the recent literature for uh, trying to understand the decline in, in in income inequality in Latin America. There are also uh, country studies that explore these links for um, Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, Colombia, for many countries, for some countries. But uh, this, most of this literature, which is based on microdata, suffers from endogeneity, just correlations. About economic complexity, uh, conceptually the idea here, the idea is to reflect the diversity uh, of individual knowledge in an economy and how this is combined and translated into the production and into what the economy produces. And based on this idea, there is an, an index uh, that, try, that measures economic complexity by Hidalgo and Hausmann. And this index has been used in previous studies that uh, appro uh, approximate a similar question. Um, we have this study for Hartman and co-authors that test the relationship between economic complexity. Um, I will later explain the, the intuition behind the, the measure. And inequality and income inequality with uh, a panel data for countries. Uh, they use the Gini index from another uh, world, uh, for another database that includes a, a lot of countries. And from from them all, we have some uh, more recent papers that, again, explore this relationship. For example, this one from Liam Ambu, who also uh, find um, the idea that uh, there is a negative uh, association. So when economies um, um, inc uh, increase their, their uh, complexity in terms of production, there is a decline in inequality. They also find that, but when they, uh, they, they do dynamic panel estimations, the, the results change. And there are also some other um, papers that tend to find this, this same uh, kind of, of, of association, but in this case is mediated by human capital. A literature review of, the, of this um, Literature is there in that paper of Hartman. So what we do here, uh, we have a panel of countries for the period of 1990 
2018, data for in income inequality at the country level comes from the WID database. We um, uh, tested, tried with two uh, measures of in informality. One is informality as measured by the by ILOs, the share of informal employment. The problem there is that um, the coverage of this database is not good enough, so we the sample is, is restricted. And then we use the share of informal output in total output for the uh, informal economy database from the World Bank. And some are estimations, and the others are modelizations of this measure, so it's... Um, it's a new measure that tries to 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 reflect the percentage of informality, the percentage of uh, informal GDP, and the index, uh, the index that I was mentioning, the economic complexity index, index combines information um, about the diversity of the production of a country, so the number of, of products that a country uh, exports, and the ubiquity of these products, that is the number of countries that. Uh, produce and export the same uh, type of, uh, the, of product. So the idea is that more sophisticated economies are diverse and are able to export products that on average uh, are, are only produced by a few number of countries. The method is similar to the, uh, to the other papers. We, we also have a, a country fixed effect that are not there, and I don't know why, but it's basically uh, trying to uh, to estimate the link between inequality and the um, and the measures of product of the productive structure. These two measures, and we have control variables, and and we also uh, do estimations for different regions and and groups of, of countries. But I'm here. I'm presenting just some basic results. First, is something about the data that we all know. But there, you have the the gene index for this from this database, and we can see um, higher inequality uh, levels uh, for uh, sub-Saharan Africa, the green, and also for Latin American countries, the the yellow ones. About informality, we have, as I said, we have two measures, but this measure of ILO is very incomplete, so we can re we, we don't get results with that. But the other measure about the informal output as percent percentage of GDP, again, we have a higher levels of informality for Latin American countries and for sub-Saharan countries. And here we have this economic complexity index. Uh, the, I should have said this before, but the, the colors reflect the region. So again, we have sub-Saharan and uh, the green and uh, Latin America and the, the uh, yellow countries with low levels of complexity. And uh, we have European countries at the top. These are the changes. We have here, just to, to give an idea, we have three uh, points in time of this economic complexity index. And what we see there is that the, the blue dots that show like the, the trend in time increased uh, for East Asia and, Pac and the Pacific and for South Asia. The, those countries were able to, um, to make their economies more complex in terms of the production and rather uh, quite stability, for example, for uh, Latin America or Sub-Saharan Africa. So, uh, some descriptive statistics, the association, the positive correlation that I was mentioning between GDP and informality, we can see it at the, at the world level also, both with uh, informality in GDP, it is the upper part, uh, and also with employment, but it's not so clear. And then we have in some, uh, the, the same, in general terms, in, in all regions, but the, with some exceptions. And we have an, uh, this correlation between Gini and the economic complexity index. Uh, so this is like the first just correlations. And what we have there in the in regions is that that, that negative correlation um, is not, uh, you, you cannot see that for the yellow uh, dots that are the low income countries. That is different, a different correlation there. So. Some basic results. I, I will present the results without uh, without uh, the set of controls because they are they when we are proving the controls the, the main result remains. So I just present the basics to give the idea of what we get. We get in the first column uh, the positive association between informality and 
measure uh, with the CDP measure and uh, inequality, and that uh, that estimation only includes a control for GDP. In the second case, with um, with employment, we, we do not, with the ILO measure, we do not get any result. And with economic complexi complexity, we get in the third column a positive result, which is different from previous results in the literature, and that's what is, we are now trying to, to understand. And when we, in the other two, <clears throat> two columns, we, we estimate to, we, using the two measures and the two measures of productive structure, and the results are maintained. And what we do here, trying to understand this difference with the previous literature, is that we consider uh, economic complexity and also, uh, in a non-linear way. Uh, in the first column, it's just a repetition of what was I, I showing, the positive relation. But in the second one, what we do is that we include the quadratic term. And in that case, the, we have the, a positive relation and then up to a certain point of a certain level of complexity of the economy, and then a negative relationship that it's similar to what previous studies found. Uh, if we, what is the difference with that one? Uh, if we include the control with GDP, that remains. And if we split our sample uh, in between high income countries and not high income countries, uh, we have uh, a neg the negative uh, relationship for high income countries and the uh, positive for not high income countries. So what we are now uh, exploring is like trying to, we, we, um, we took the, the previous evidence from Hartman uh, article and replicated it. It's not exactly as we, the, sec the second and third columns are uh, the replications we get. Uh, uh, results very similar to them, and then we change only the Gini just to see if the differences in the world database are, are driving the results, and it's not the case with the with that results. We we get that. So what we are now exploring this is pool OLS because uh, they have this and they have also fixed effects, uh, but we cannot reproduce them because they add some data that it's not available. But we are. Uh, looking for that, but basically, the 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 use ag an aggregation for for diff for um, for periods of time uh, averages for two periods of time. So we are uh, like exploring if if it's the fixed effects, the aggregation, or or just the fact that the linear uh, that the controls that they are in. But when we do that without controls, it's the same. Are like. Uh, driving those results, but basically what, what we have up to now is that the levels of informality measured as a percentage of GDP are associated with higher levels of income inequality, uh, and contrary to previous evidence, uh, economic complexity is associated with higher levels of income inequality, but when you do a, a non-linear modelization, th that depends on the, on the level. Uh, so, um, as, as economists, uh, get more complex, they present lower inequality, but after a certain level of economic complexity. So that's it. Okay, thank you.